G'day y'all, just a quick video, um, do a walk around of my 2010 Haiti Mirage Oasis. I'll start from the stern, walk up to the bow bow, uh, just give you a few ideas of a few modifications that I've made uh, to the vessel. So here we go. Okay, firstly the uh, kayak here is quite long and um, it can be quite difficult to maneuver onto a vehicle and tie down as well so I've also made um, videos on those subjects as well so if you'd like to view them as well the link is in the description. Okay starting at the stern um, we have the normal rudder I haven't made any modifications to that the only thing I have done is placed the um, red onion bag onto the uh, rear there but I've, two reasons. Uh, the first one is that it, uh, I bunch it up um, before I um, lift it onto the uh, vehicle because I find that this part here always seems to rub on the ground so just in an effort to um, ease the wearing and the dragging on, on, along the ground however briefly um, just to do that also visually um, whilst the um, kayak is on the um, vehicle itself okay that's red uh, and it stands out and because it does overhang when on the vehicle um, it's a little bit of a notification there to the drivers behind you that you have something on your car. Uh, likewise uh, when I'm traveling with it on the vehicle I just clip on the uh, yellow uh, warning flag um, just to make sure that it can be seen when it's on uh, top of the vehicle. And quite easy to unclip and um, stow away or conversely I just leave it on there and fold it up place it out of the way when I'm on the water. Okay, another good feature about the Hobie is that the rudder can actually stow out of the way when you're um, when you're in, you need to um, transport it or you're in approaching shallow water. Uh, so you can do that directly from the controls up in the, um, the cockpit there, which I'll show you in a minute. However, you can conversely just if you're up this end, you don't need to move up the other end and just stow it out of the way, and then you're ready to to go on to the next part. Okay, most of the Hobies come with a um, cart, wheel cart, and this is where I stow it on the um, um, Mirage. Being a 2010 model, it doesn't have the, uh, the built-in holes which other uh, later models have. This is where I stow it, sits in there nicely, and uh, also a benefit is that I can lock it right in here uh, when I'm um, detaching a fish to throw it back away. I get it in there and it sits in nicely. Okay, moving to the rear seat now. Um, I've actually replaced the standard Hobie seat um, with the uh, Surf and Summit or Surf to Summit um, GTS Expedition seat. Uh, it's probably the most expensive uh, modification I've made to the kayak, uh, but it's well worth it. Like the uh, the standard uh, Hobie seat that comes with the 2010 model were, um, well, I, I thought they were pretty substandard actually but um, and I'll show you why uh, when we get up to the front seat just as a comparison but uh, as it stands with that um, surf to summit seat in the expedition I can sit in this all day and um, it's no worries at all it's very comfortable um, very good seat um, the good thing about it is it locks into place using these standard mounts. The only other modifications that I've really made to it is I've placed the carabiners, single lock carabiners onto the um, rear pins here just to give it that um, extra reach uh, and make it a little bit easier to get in and out of those existing eyelets over here. Uh, conversely, um, if you're going to make a modification, you could put eyelets back here to allow the seat to sit back up higher, uh, but it's fine for me. It's no worries at all. Um, I have placed also on a, um, a mount for a rod mount, which I, I did go through the phase of using two rods. Um, I've, I've cut that away now. Um, I just use the one rod, um, but I still left that the ball on there in, in case I go back to you know, long, longer trips where I might need um, two rods. Uh, also up on the uh, on the front here, um, I've replaced the. Um, the standard netting um, with the rubberized one, which I found is a lot better. 
Uh, I can, I can do a comparison, but the front one, the front one is still the old, the old one, and I can show you why I changed here. But basically, the, the electric, the elasticity sort of went in the, uh, the netting, uh, and I found that the rubber here is also um, less likely to catch onto the lure hooks. Um, so it's um, it's quite heavy, and it's very um, easy to replace. So I'm screw the old one and screw the new one. Here. Um, the other modifications that I have is I have a pair of pliers always on a leash, so just a one bit of cord, a uh, mill spec cord, and tied it off on there. So always leash stuff on your kayak, and uh, so it's you have got a waterproof camera. Uh, fitted in behind the seat here, and I've attached it to um, flotation device as well. So the camera does float, and it will say float because it's got the um, leash in there, and it won't anywhere because it's locked in between the seat. Um, behind the seat as well is some netting. Um, I also keep a um, sponge there so when I've finished uh, and I just wash down the, um, the kayak prior to leaving the, um, the fishing site. Uh, most of the um, sites that I go to have a, um, a wash down area um, so I'll bring my own sponge just to give it a wash down. Okay, and the, um, the hatch just next to the seat here, um, so I keep my case of lures, um, that, they're standard kits that come with the Hobie, um, they fit very well, sits in the top there, um, standard case for lures, I can go through the setup of I have for lures in, in um, later videos. Um, primarily what I keep in here is the Hobie dry bag. Um, and in there I keep um, car keys, phone, uh, anything that I don't want to get wet and I don't need to use um, directly uh, while I'm in the, in the uh, kayak. Um, if I'm going for longer trips I usually uh, place in a uh, container there with some food um, so it's easy, easy to get to. Okay, and the Hobie also comes with a Hobie water bottle. Um, tip that I use is I always freeze the um, water inside there the night before. Um, I place it in there just before I leave the house. I just place a little bit of water in the top so it aids in um, melting the water. So I've always got the cold water during the day. Um, pretty handy tip there. Okay, for those who haven't seen Hobies before, like I mentioned previously, um, it has an up and down control for raising and lowering the rudder. So if you're coming into shallows and you want to raise the rudder, simply pull on the up button and it'll pull the cord and the, the rudder will come up. And also same with the uh, down control for um, placing the, ru the rudder down. And you simply pull on that and the rudder will go down. Can argue, arguably the best feature about the Hobie is the, uh, the pedal system and that means hands-free fishing for me. So just to control the uh, direction, if you push over to the left, um, you'll actually move over to the left, pull it over to the right, and will steer it around to the right. Uh, very good feature, uh, works really well. Okay, so onto the Mirage Drive or the, the pedal system that uh, most of the Hobies have. Uh, very good feature, propels you along really well in the water, um, good way to not. So I've actually made, uh, purchased the um, Turbo XT fins, uh, three, three standard sizes, you've got the standard, you've got the Turbo and then the ST. So the STs have longer um, uh, flippers at the end there. Um, just um, be careful, when I first um, started using the Hobie I used grounded a lot, um, and didn't realise how far they actually extended and the actual the, uh, metal frame there started to push through um, the flipper itself. I mean, still use them, I've used these, like, like I said this is a 2010 model so I've used them for quite some years now and they, they stand up quite well but it's just something to consider especially when you start heading into shallow waters rather than doing full strokes, um, you just do smaller strokes. Um, I'll give you a demonstration uh, underneath so you can see what, how far the, the flippers hang down. So just by pushing forward and back, uh, you the water. Um, and you can adjust the settings uh, for those people with longer legs. 
adjusted all the way up to the front here so um, you're not, not cramped so you can adjust it to your uh, height and, and leg length. The fins actually extend quite away with the XT turbo models uh, and just by moving back and forth on the pedals you can see how the flippers raise up to the um, surface of the uh, craft or underneath the craft. So when you're approaching um, shallow water um, you can just push push forward uh, with one foot and that'll raise it up there and you can just make little tiny strokes that'll um, put you through the water. Um, same for when you're coming into land, just push forward on one uh, and it'll come up underneath and just stay out of the way. Okay, so the um, pedal system locks uh, in really well into the well there. Um, just to, to drag it out, you just simply undo the clips one on each side, then lift it out and virtually the same to put it in, just line it up and then when it's lined up properly it'll simply snap into place and away you go. Okay, I also installed a uh, Lawrence X4 Pro uh, depth finder, fish finder um, didn't cost much at all, probably less than the actual GDS seat to be honest. Um, so I installed that myself. Um, I got a mount here from um, Austin Kayak, uh, so all the way from the United States. Um, it was quite cheap, with, even with shipping uh, at the time, it was quite cheap and um, works really well. Sits in that um, sail mast hole really well. Um, and I run the wires. Uh, from the back to the battery which is I've located up into the front well uh, which I'll show you directly. Uh, should work. Should power. Yep. And here she goes. Now the other modifications I've made to the um, kayak is you'll notice here I've put um, large washers there. I found that the actual hand grip where it joined uh, this webbing part here where it joined the plastic underneath was separating um, so to prevent that I just put a large washer on each side and screwed it down um, same with the other side I've had no issues with the um, handles coming apart now and um, they, they stay locked in there really well because I'll show you around the other side what I actually tie off to the handles um, so I do use them not only for um, getting in and out or, or lifting the kayak but also uh, to place accessories onto. Okay moving up to the front now this is the, uh, the standard uh, 2010 um, Hobie seat. Uh, you can see it has um, it had plugs in here in the front. What I did um, just to make it stick a little bit better is I just roughed it up with a little bit of sandpaper so I just help it grip. When you have to put it in push it into the um, into the wells here. Um, so we push the plugs in uh, quite firmly and then twist um, and then you just lock the lock it back in there. Seat there's a little asterisk strap that locks into the back and then the seat comes forward to, locks into the front like that. Um, both sides do that. Um, like I said that, that's really thin that um, material there and, and I found that I'd, I'd, my um, upper legs and, and uh, I'd, get, I'd get numb and it'd really become uncomfortable um, so that's why I upgraded the seat uh, so thankfully uh, in the Hobies that you buy today the standard models in um, 2018 etc um, they've done away with that whole seating um, they've gone with a much more advanced seating similar to what the uh, Pro Angles had for a long time um, so, uh, really good seats that they have in them now. Um, so if you're going to buy a, a later model that didn't have them, I would wholly recommend um, upgrading your seat um, to something like the GTS that I've got. Um, just makes it a life a, little, a lot more comfortable out on the water. Okay, so in the front, under the uh, front hatch, uh, that's where I've placed the battery for the fish finder to a um, separate container. Um, and Velcro the bottom of it uh, and also the bottom of the hatch itself and that sits in there uh, quite well and doesn't move around too much. I do I do take that out um, before I um, 
tip the kayak um, with where, it, where it'll um, the Velcro will prevent it from uh, falling over in um, you know a slight tilt. Uh, the minute you, you, you tip it past um, you know a certain angle, it's going to fly off. So the, the Velcro does its part, but it's not um, not a be all to end all. Okay, so on to probably the most unique uh, modification I've made to the kayak is the uh, anchor system. Um, so what I've done is got some PVC piping um, and used a um, water uh, correction, a um, stubby cooler, uh, cut that out, connected it and wrapped it in a bit of cloth there to make sure that diameter is um, exactly the same as the um, well for the Hobie bottle and it sits in there really well, it just sits in there um, it's not glued in there, it just sits in there nice and firm um, and at the end there I've placed in a large weight um, and placed some tongs on the end and hooked it up to a reel with a rope so I can um, throw it in and then reel it in and then it's out of the way um, also the um, that's usually the job for the front seat uh, so he's sitting in the front seat it's also the Yankee guy uh, he gets that job okay also up at the front uh, towards the bow you can see the block that's in there I usually leave that in there when I'm uh, going on a solo trip uh, just to prevent some, uh, some of the water from splashing up into the um, into, into the bow. Uh, all, all Hobies have that. Um, it's pretty standard. And it just locks into place using the same technique as what you lock in your um, your fins or your Mirage drive. Okay and on to this is the standard net um, cargo net. Uh, you can see there that the elastic is uh, a bit worn. Um, so I sort of similar state to what the, uh, the rear one was for me except I had some rips in here where um, hooks had got caught on the netting itself so that's why I replaced it with the rubber uh, and I just left this one as it is so there's the difference much prefer the rubber one so um, that's just my uh, preference uh, as you can see here always uh, I've placed the, uh, the, the paddle on the there. it comes with two paddles um, I always take at least one when I'm out um, I just find it handy when I'm backed into a place I need to um, get out, I just find that the paddle's a little bit easier to, to manoeuvre the kayak when I need to get out of somewhere when it's quite shallow. Um, another anchor system that I use if I don't use the, the front anchor system is um, this modification here. So what I do with this is um, I just clamp it around um, if I need a timbered or um, an area that you know has got some um, debris that doesn't move around too much um, like in amongst trees and that is, is a good place to use it I can just hook that up to um, the nearest tree um, obviously tie off I usually tie off to the handle itself here um, and I find that works well okay the other modification that I've made to the kayak is I've placed some velcro on here when I was in the um, fishing club we all had um, been given numbers to identify yourself as a member and simply you velcro it on the side there uh, I could take it on and off as, as I needed to okay so there you have uh, my walk around and modifications of my 2010 Hobie Mirage Oasis I always find that it's um, a good idea just to spend a couple of trips out there and and realize what um, modifications you need rather than just diving in um, when you first get your kayak um, so everyone's different everyone has um, different setups and personal preferences um, so I hope that's helped you out and given you a few ideas um, any comments or questions um, please place in the section down below thanks for your time